With four months left in the year, there's still plenty of time to get your finances in tip-top shape before 2022. Local financial professional Mike Hoyanen shares some helpful money moves you might want to make right now. Mike, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Erin. Okay, we're coming off of um, some serious summer spending. People yeah. do spend more in the summer, don't they? Well, I think this year, even more so because, you know, like a lot of people just want to make up for some lost time from last year, not be able to do much at all. So I think we spent more money. A lot of people have this summer. So, you know, with fall here, let's get a, you know, a new season, a new perspective, a new opportunity with roughly about four months left here, end of the year to finish the year strong, get on track and let's have a great, uh, good financial 2022. Yeah. Why is fall a good time to take a look at the checkbook and take a closer look at our finances? Yeah, well, I have five tips here to kind of look at, you know, you know, there's some key points here at the end of the year to kind of look at. Um, obviously, we want to review your you know, financial goals. Uh, this is a good time here to look at short term and long term goals, especially when it comes to Roth, uh, Roth conversions for those. Um, you know, as we know what your income is for most of the year. Uh, it's a good time to look at doing Roth conversions to maximize these tax brackets, okay? So that's your short-term goal is planning these Roth conversions, but why do you do Roth conversions? Well, um, it's for you know, paying your taxes now so your money grows tax-free. So it's a better tax situation because we're under these tax uh, reform brackets right now that it's supposed to end after 2025, but it could be sooner. So let's take advantage of those while we can. But also for legacy planning, if you want to leave money behind your children, uh, Roth money is the best money to leave behind because they'll never pay a time of taxes. And with a SECURE Act being passed, I know this is a lot of information, but the SECURE Act was passed about a year and a half ago, went to effect, your kids have a shortened time to get that money out of those IRA and 401ks accounts, and that could cost them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, you also say refreshing your spending strategy is a good idea. How do we, how do, we do that? What might need refreshing? Well, I think because inflation has hit us so hard this year, you know, it's so much higher. We're, we're paying for it more than at the gas pumps, you know, you know, three bucks to over $3 a gallon, but that's affecting our cost of food, our clothing, our services we're paying for. So um, when we compare what our, our budget was last year, our spending was last year and, and not being able to travel as well, now a more realistic version of what your spending is, let's, let's do an updated budget to make sure it's lining up. And unfortunately, you might have to cut out some of those those, you know, frills, you know, the, the coffee runs or some of the other things you're spending your money on because you know, that's a big talk when people come to our office is they're spending more money than they were last year. So let's update that uh, budget worksheet. You can get one on my website as well. Cool. Yeah, those little luxuries we treated ourselves to when there was nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. And those free dollars, you know, the, the extra unemployment dollars for those that those monies ended too. So that's another reason to, to readjust it. Absolutely. Um, you say rebalancing your investment plan um, is yeah. something else you could do this fall. And so give us some ideas here. Yeah, well, um, when we look at a year and a half ago when the coronavirus bubble came, it, you know, like the recession, the market lost 34%. And now we most people, I'm sure most people have recovered from that as long as you hung in there. Uh, but now the market's come up so much further from that and you're just that much closer to retirement or in retirement, so let's readjust that. Usually it takes longer for the market to recover than what it did. It was a, really a, a shock when it happened, but also it was a shock how fast it came back up last year. So you should be investing the way your risk tolerance is, and most people don't, they don't put two and two together. You shouldn't be investing what your brother-in-law tells you or your coworker tells you or your friend tells you. You need to be investing how your risk tolerance tells you. Um, you know, don't invest blindly. You should know what you're, you're investing in and match, make sure your investments match your number and your risk tolerance. And even though we're coming off a lot of summer vacations, we might have, you know, holiday trips we want to take or like winter getaways <laughs> that people are planning. So it's also a good time to, to think about saving too. Yeah, it's save short term again, long term. So I think saving for each, you know, summer vacation or trip, I think that's important. Um, I think it's so important just to keep those dreams and goals ahead of you. Why are you putting money out of each paycheck into the bank and into your 401k and IRAs? Um, you have to revisit the big dream. I mean, that keeps you focused. Uh, I know a lot of people, they come in here, why are we saving so much? Why are we just living paycheck to paycheck? Because all of our extra money is going to some kind of sort of saving. Uh, revisit why you're doing this. And I, I think once you're on vacation, you understand that. Or once you're retired earlier or have that lifestyle you, you attain to have, 
um, you're going to understand why you do it. But most people can't do it themselves. You have to get with a professional to make sure that you're going to get there on time. And a lot of times we've had people come in here think they had to work two, three, four more years. But we can show them you can retire today. And so sometimes it's a saving grace to actually work with a professional that can show them with a plan in place that you can retire sooner. I like that. Yeah, really what all this is, like getting a jump on those New Year's resolutions, like we'll just do them four months early. You've given us uh, so many good ideas. Do you have any more that you want to pass along? Yeah, it's, uh, this is the end of the year where you have to, well, if you're 72 or older, you have to take out your required minimum distribution. So last year we got a pass because the CARES Act was passed because the market was down and you didn't have to take your RMDs. But if you, no more pass this year. If you don't take out your RMDs, if you're 72 or older, you have a 50% penalty of what you're supposed to take out. So if your RMDs are $20,000, you have a $10,000 penalty if you don't get that money out by the end of the year. So you have to make sure you're on top of that. And you know, there's an art to taking out your money. Just don't take withdrawals. You wanna make sure your money's gonna last as long as possible. So there's an art to taking out your RMDs. And for those people who don't want the RMDs, but they have to take it, if you're giving to charity, there's a thing called a QCD qualified charitable distribution, well, that money can go directly to charity and you don't have to worry about taking the money out first, pay taxes, and then give to charity, especially if you're not itemizing your taxes. QCDs are great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Good stuff as always. Thank you so much, Mike, for your insight. Yeah, you're welcome, Aaron. Good seeing you again.